Like the Spotlight and Hot Light Strike Corporation does not in any way encourage or condone the use, purchase, sale, or transfer of any illegal substances, nor do we encourage or condone trafficking in any unlawful activities. We support a high reduction approach for the purpose of education and promoting individual and public safety. If you are choosing to use psychedelic substances, please do so responsibly. One of the things that I think made it so special was like I had no idea what a fucking mystical sexual experience was. My definition of mystical or like sacred or spiritual is being in connection with oneness or the source. Our brains are constantly playing this trick on us, trying to make us feel like we're separated. And so psychedelics are one of those things that uh, gets that part of your brain, that sense of self to kind of like turn off. And that's why when you are on psychedelics, you know, you feel so immersed, you know, even a lot of people who don't consider themselves to be religious will always say like, you know, I just feel like we're all connected somehow. Psychedelics is one way where you can have these mystical uh, experiences. And I think if you combine that with uh, a sexual experience with someone that you love, it can result in something that's really hard to put into words. I like to just tee up the word psychedelic. It's the combination of psyche and deloon. It's mind expansion, it's soul revealing. It's a term that was coined in 1956 in a conversation between psychiatrist Humphrey Osmond and Aldous Huxley. So sex should be mind, soul, body expanding. It should be psychedelic by nature. Realizing that there potentially is this avenue towards experiencing these things and feel feeling and realizing that there is like more to this and that we are all connected and you know we all come from this one source is very empowering to think that there might be an avenue to do it. You know, a process uh, involving sex and someone that you love uh, and psychedelics. I think your relationship with yourself can be a way that you experience uh, Satori enlightenment, mystical experiences, things like that. And I think that the more you are disconnected from your body and yourself and what you are feeling, the harder it is going to be for you to experience those things. And so I think psychedelics can be a tool where you can become much more integrated and connected with your body again and present with your body again. So we talk about psychedelics all the time as mind expanding and you know, getting out of the body, transcending the body. I don't know how we ended up thinking about them that way. There's a lot of people having conversations about the ways in which psychedelics put you in your body and that that's what's sacred, that's what's mystical, that's what's transcendent. So it's kind of like a paradox because sex, because of sex, it's like in your body, it's of your body, but also it takes you out of your body. So it's like a, it's a, I, I, it's a, well, it's that. Transdental. Transdental, yes, teeth. I was with someone that I knew was going to tell me that he loved me for the first time. And I had already told him I loved him and I knew that during this sexual experience where we were high on acid, that I was just going to meditate the entire time about how much I loved him. Then the feeling of loving him. And the whole time, like I kept feeling like I was going deeper and deeper into him, no pun intended. I'm sorry, ma'am. That pun was totally intended. You really punched the word whole. And then you said deeper and deeper inside him. We get it, girl, you peg. I also said punching holes. So that pun was also intended. As I was looking into his eyes, I was looking into the universe. And while it was happening, I was like, how the fuck am I ever going to be able to describe this? In my mind, I was like, oh, this literally just must be what sex on acid is like, you know? And so I asked him afterwards, I was like, holy shit, like, sex on acid is fun. And he's like, I've never had anything like that happen to me in my entire life. I think it was a combination of different things. I don't, I, I, I don't know, I've never tried to recreate it, but I think the psychedelics were part of it. I think being completely present, they kind of help you be completely present and like meditating on how much I loved this person. We have this deep anxiety humans do of like, I feel like being separated from the source. That's kind of what our birth is. And we're constantly trying to get back to that, that feeling of being completely one and merged with the source. And so what else can you feel completely merged with like another person besides sex? Merging sounds sexy but also corporate, like AOL and Time Warner, but sexier. We can heal so much with sex. We, we, we tend to shut down our bodies 
Uh, even in the sexual encounter, we shut down the body. We really only experience anything unless there's peak pleasure or peak pain. What's it like to like turn on the subtle body? What's it like to really be in, in, an, in a conscious exploration with a partner? Um, I don't actually think that happens a lot. When I experienced that, it made me realize like the church does not want people to have access to this because as soon as you start to feel those things and realize that you don't need to go into a place of worship, that you can have a mystical experience potentially with yourself or with the presence of another person and it involves sex, like that puts a lot of power in that like sexual experience and I can see why the church or some people would want that to be stopped. Connection to and exploration of spirit. I mean, people are seeking. This idea of relationship to self in a compassionate way can help facilitate that exploration. And, and I think people who have a relationship to organized religion should be able to explore their connection to spirit through sexuality just as those who don't. But psychedelics just might be the invitation to an expedited and more expansive exploration of self, spirit, and sexuality coming together. So this is where my little conspiracy theory starts and where I like, I end up like trying to learn as much as I can about the origins of sexuality and um, spirituality because I feel like at one point these had to be more merged than they were and something came along and was like, no, sex is completely wrong. It's completely shameful, like da 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 da. The three books that I'm reading right now are literally about like the history of like sacred sexuality and like the erotic histories of all of the different religions and things like that. So what Ginger is talking about isn't actually a conspiracy theory. There is historical evidence that dates back 50,000 years that shows that human beings, when we created spiritual practices, we were often worshiping fertility and sex. These were very important parts of the community and sex was not shameful. In fact, you could actually go to a temple, pay a tithing, have sex with a priestess or priest for spiritual growth and enlightenment. So this was something that ancient and prehistoric cultures found really important and valuable. I think sex, body work, psychedelics, all of that doesn't exist in a way that I can envision it existing to really help heal people. I do so much work on myself when it comes to this and I am so far from where I used to be when it comes to like my body image and my self love and like not shaming myself when it comes to sexuality. And so I wanna get it back to a place like that. Like I envision sex work and sex like it, to be this type of like body healing thing where people could potentially go to this like sex temple thing and take some psychedelics and have one of these crazy mystical sexual experiences with a facilitator, with someone who is like, like an avenue or whatever it is to feel these things, like these moments of Satori and enlightenment where you just feel completely and totally at one with like everything, you know? Burning Man would be a great place to try this. Oh my gosh, that would be so great. I think the most feasible solution here is actually something in the interim and intermediate ground where we can train couples. We can bring psychedelics into an existing relationship and help them heal themselves by virtue of them understanding how to utilize psychedelia and sexuality to heal. Um, I think that's probably the closest thing we're gonna get culturally in the near term to widespread healing using sex and psychedelics. I think it's a very unique cultural phenomenon. In Western society, we look at sex work in a sometimes very judgmental way. In certain societies, it's merged into the culture in more of a healing way. Of course, there are different degrees of what's safe, what's healthy, what's oppressive, what's inappropriate. I think we need to break through the taboo. I think sex work is a contemporary taboo for a lot of reasons. I think it goes directly in the face of what the patriarchy expects of a woman. I think that it is one of the only industries where women make significantly more than men, and I think that upsets people a lot. Do you want me to tell you about the patriarchy? I think okay. he does. The patriarchy is a bunch of old ideas that are still set up by dead people. Mm hmm Mostly white with dicks. Mostly white with Dicks. I think that secretly society wants women to be giving away their sex for free to one individual person for the rest of their life. Not to disagree, I don't think society wants women to give sex away for free. I think they want to find a way to monetize it for themselves. We just imagine if corporations were sponsoring sex, it'd be like, missionary, now sponsored by Tesla. Monsanto presents 
anal, the other white meat. And so sex work kind of like, it goes in the face of that. It will like show a lot of wives that maybe that their situation isn't actually as fair and they're doing a lot of unpaired, unpaid domestic labor in their household. And I think it's harder potentially for people to determine what is sex trafficking than they want to believe. They want to believe that like sex trafficking is like people being kidnapped on the streets when in reality it's probably like super unhealthy relationships plus sex work. And so you're not gonna be able to just like look at someone on a fucking airplane and be like, oh my God, they're a sex trafficking victim. And I think that that nuance and that gray area scares people. And so they would rather just be like, we're gonna make it all illegal. It all needs to be abolished completely because we don't wanna take the time and the energy to learn how to, we could potentially identify and help trafficking victims. Because the smartest thing would, to do would be to educate sex workers and help them like reach out to people when they are, when we know that they are victims of trafficking. There's a lot of nuance. You know, whore phobia is extremely real in our culture. We grow up and are constantly fed images that are taught us to view sex as something that is threatening to our social safety. And we are taught to stigmatize and look down on sex workers. We are also actively taught confusing messages that make people think that sex work and sex trafficking are the same thing when they absolutely are not. I also think that um, a lot of people have their own individual um, problems when it comes to sex. And so if you have someone who is really sexually empowered and owning it and loving it and being out and open, it's gonna bother the people who deep down have their own sexual problems. And I've just started to see in society at large and the people who have said terrible things to me about my job, as soon as I sit down and I talk with them and I get to know them more, there's always a reason in their life that led them to react that way towards me and my job. Psychologically speaking, we have several different needs. We have the need for power, we have the need for popularity, we have the need for purpose. And so what happens with sex is oftentimes people conflate that that's an issue of power. And so they go, you're using sex as power or you're trying to take sex as power. That's one way to look at it. It's a very destructive way to look at it. The other way to look at it is purpose, that you use sex to touch, to heal, to create. And that is coming at it from the purpose perspective, not the power perspective. And so our, our society does this a lot. We get power trips and purpose mixed up. And so I can be a mirror to people and a lot of their unhealed parts. And I didn't realize that until I met friends who actually and actively work on themselves. And they said, wow, Ginger, like I didn't realize that I had more things to work on about like sex and sex work until I met you. And those are the people that I want in my life, not that are like, triggered and then they're like you're the person it's your fault I, I don't want you in my life anymore like no i want people that are like oh wow maybe i learned some things wrong about sex and sex work and like you're teaching me different and i appreciate that